welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing a July wrap up and in the month of July I only read eight books which is so much less than I usually read. So I guess life has just been busier this month but yeah it wasn't a great reading month. I wish it could have been better but I'm going to show you the eight books that I read and I'm going to show you them in the order that I rated them lowest to highest just so that way we can end this video on a good note and yeah. So the lowest rated book is actually the book that I read last and that is Silver Nitrate by Sylvia Marino Garcia and this is the second book that I read from this author. She wrote Mexican Gothic and that book I really 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 wanted to like but I didn't. It was just fine and that's kind of how I feel about this one except I think this one was a lot worse. <laughs> so I'm just having a really rough time with this author and I really want to find a book by her that I really like but of the two that I read I just have not liked them and this book I'm not gonna lie was so boring. I tried to get the audiobook to go as fast as I could just to finish this faster and it honestly could have been that I just didn't like the audiobook so I just felt like the story was really boring. Like it's about this like film role that has like silver nitrate in it and because I guess that's how like they were made back in the day. Someone put like these runes and like curses and stuff like in this film role and then all of a sudden like our two main characters like are seeing like dead people and like this one director guy and he got like cursed or something and honestly this was just so boring like that's the only way I can describe it. Like it took forever for something to finally happen. It was just way too wordy and I don't know it needed something to get things going and there's just nothing to it and I'm really sad because I really wanted to like it but it honestly sucked. Like <laughs> so this is gonna get a two star and that's because I feel bad giving it anything lower than that even though how I'm talking about it makes it seem like I should give it like a one star but I'll settle with a two star for this one. And then the next book is Wreck the Halls by Tessa Bailey. So I got an arc of this one and this one comes out in October and honestly the story was just fine. I do have a lot of issues with it just because in this book it has to do a lot with live streaming and there was just so many privacy issues and like security issues that it just made me anxious the whole book. <laughs> I feel like if Tessa just put like one line being like oh like we solved all the privacy and security issues then I'd be like okay like I don't have to worry about it anymore. But the thing is is that they were just showing like how to get like into their apartments and like all of this stuff and it's like why are you showing your exact location to a million people? It just wasn't smart and I would say my only other critique on it is that it's supposed to be a Christmas book and there's nothing wintry about it. <laughs> there was one snowball fight and there were like a couple like Santas but that was it. I just really wanted the setting to like describe that it's snowing or something just because we never got that like like I had no clue there was even snow on the ground to do a snowball fight. Oh and I forgot I really don't like the ending. Our main character beat like walks out on Melody and like doesn't say anything and she's just expected to go after him like like he left her like 20 minutes ago and she's like talking to like all these fans being like oh where'd he go and it's like how is she supposed to know to go after him because he does something at the end that I really didn't like and honestly it kind of ruined the book for me so I'm gonna give this a three star. I mean I really love Tessa Bailey's writing and I feel like she does characters really well. I just really wish that she would work on like plot and setting but honestly I can't think of much that I liked in this book. It's honestly just the way that she writes characters is why this is getting a three star. Okay and now the rest of the books I swear are going to be positive reviews. I swear. I read Legends and Lattes and if you watched the video where I read the first chapter of every single book on my TBR you would know that I really didn't like this first chapter and I read it again and I still really didn't like it 
but the rest of the book so good. So it took me like three chapters to really get into this but once I got into it I loved it. Thimble is my favorite character and he is so cute and I really want to try his cinnamon rolls just because they make it sound so good and honestly it is a cozy fantasy but the writing at times really does give me high fantasy vibes just because I'm not familiar with what these creatures are and like everything about them. Like I don't know what an orc is or <laughs> anything. And so there were times where it took me a little while to get into the writing, but honestly just having these really fun characters and this really fun story of them putting together this coffee shop and like you're going along every single aspect of building this coffee shop with them, like finding the building, getting workers, having people try out coffee because they've never heard of it before. And like there was this one guy being like, I don't like hot drinks. And it took them forever to figure out, oh, we should do iced coffee or like, oh, we should have food. And so it was just really fun to go along this journey with them. And the prequel story is coming out later this year, but it kind of makes me nervous because at the end of this book, they have this part, which is like, 50 pages of a prequel story and I hated it like I wanted it over with so fast <laughs> so I'm really hoping that the actual like book of the prequel is better I don't know it was just it gave me vibes of like the first couple chapters of this book it was just a lot of setup and I don't really care for that like I just really like the characters and the coffee shop so yeah, but I gave this book a four star and I mean, I probably will pick up the prequel story, but I'm just hoping that I like it more than the short story at the end. <laughs> okay, and then another book that I gave four stars is Zero Days by Ruth Ware. So I feel like this book is different from any other thriller that I've ever read before, just because it has to do a lot with technology and having our main character on the run. I feel like I've never read a book like that before. I don't know. I just really like Ruth Swear writings, so I feel like that could contribute to why I like this book so much. But in this book, we have our main character, Jack, and her husband Gabe and they are pen testers which is that these companies hire them to try to break into their buildings and like their software and computers just to see like where they need to improve in case like a real hacker does come along. So this book has a lot to do with like computers and hacking and all this technology and it was just a really fun time. I did end up guessing like 50% of the things that were gonna happen in this book and honestly that didn't take away from any of my enjoyment. I still really like this book and I even guessed like who the main person that we shouldn't trust is so I feel like that's speaking a lot to how much I like this book so I definitely recommend this one. Okay so these last four books were all five star reads so the first one I have is Sadie. This book was honestly really fun. I really like the podcast and I listened to it on audio so you really got like this fun podcasty vibe and like they had like all these different types of recordings like ones that sounded like phone calls and like all this stuff like they did a lot of editing to the audiobook which I really really like and in this book we have this podcast called The Girls and it's run by this guy Wes and he's really interested in Sadie's story. So her story is about her sister Maddie and Maddie went missing and they ended up finding her dead body and then a year later Sadie goes missing and we're following Sadie's perspective and also Wes's perspective through the podcast and so you learn a lot about like why Sadie is missing and like what she's trying to find because Wes the podcast guy is like going around and like finding all these clues to figure out where she went and they figure out that Sadie is trying to find her dad but the thing is that this guy really isn't her dad like the mom has no clue who Sadie's dad is and so you just learn a lot about Sadie's motive and everything and I'm not gonna lie the ending of this is not satisfying in any way like you get no solid answers at the end you just kind of have to assume what's gonna happen and I feel like not a lot of people would like that kind of ending but I really liked it like I like that you don't really get a solid answer 
So yeah, this was easily a five star read and it was honestly super, super sad. And this was also my first ever Courtney Summers book and I really want to pick up more of her books now. And then the next five star read is When the Reckoning Comes. This book was so, so good. So this is a horror book and it's about our main character Mira and she's at her best friend Celine's wedding and the wedding is set at a plantation. And in this book we go back and forth between present day and then back in time to when Mira was in high school. So when Mira was in high school, her and her friend Jesse snuck into the plantation and they both saw things that scared them to get out. And all these years later, they're still seeing things and they're like ghosts of the slaves and slave owners that were originally on this plantation. And so the entire book, they're not really sure if it's just them that can see these things or if everyone else at this wedding can also see it. And so the day that Selene is supposed to get married, she's nowhere to be seen. So everyone's looking for her, trying to figure out what happened. And we get the answer at the end. And honestly, the ending is so crazy. Like it goes in a good and a bad way. And I just really like this. And I really want to find more books that are like this one. I just feel like it was done so well. And honestly, I probably need to look at what else this author has written just because I love they're writing so much. So the next one is The Only One Left by Riley Sager and I just have to say that this might be my favorite Riley Sager book and there are two that I haven't read yet and that's Survive the Night and Final Girls but honestly this is just so 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 good. Like I really like the characters, I really like the plot of the setting, everything. I loved it all and I really liked how we got those typewriter scenes of Lenora writing her story and I really liked that rhyme about Lenora that like everyone in school says to each other like Lenora Hope is basically like a Bloody Mary and so in this book we have our main character Kit and she's a caregiver and she gets assigned to Lenora Hope and she is the town's like Bloody Mary basically. Like Kit barely even knew that Lenora Hope was a real person or that she was alive. And so there's just a lot of mystery around Lenora. And so Kit is taking care of Lenora. And the thing is that Lenora can't talk or walk or move at all. She can only move, I think, her right hand. And so Kit helps her type on the typewriter. And no one else in the house knows that Lenora can do this. So it's very secretive. Lenora is trying to tell Kit her story. And Kit finds out more about the previous caretaker, Mary. And Kit learns about like why she's no longer there. So yeah, this book is full of twists and turns. And I honestly guess like 80% of what was gonna happen and that didn't take my enjoyment out of it at all like I got super excited when I found out that I was right about something just because that never happens in books like whenever I guess something it's usually never right but like this time I was right so often so I really really love this book and I really like the audiobook we get a different narrator for Kit and Lenora so it kind of helps split that up and yeah so if you've been thinking about reading this one I highly recommend it so this last book is my favorite of the month and it might honestly be my favorite of the year and that's Mayfly I've talked about this one so much already but it's just a super gross horror book and I'm not putting gross lightly like this is easily the grossest book that I've ever read. It's very descriptive and it will definitely make you cringe. It's just super super gross but also super super good. So I've talked about this book so much already so I'll just do a quick little recap. So this is about our main character Maeve and she's living with her grandmother and her grandmother is in a coma so she has a caretaker and then Maeve also works at Disneyland with her best friend and so in this book it's kind of just going throughout Maeve's like day-to-day -day life and you kind of figure out that she's a little bit crazy and you learn that she kind of gets it from her grandmother and she's also kind of seeing her best friend's brother. A lot of the book is them hanging out and like getting to know each other more. And yeah, I feel like I shouldn't say too much more. Just know that Maeve is unhinged and she will do absolutely anything. 
and not really care too much about it. And if you like super gross horror, I need you to read this book and I need to know all your thoughts and feelings on it. So these are all the books that I read in July and I'm hoping that I read a lot more in August than I did in July, but I guess we'll see. So I hope you enjoyed this video and if you had a favorite book that you read in July, please comment down below because I would love to know and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye! Thank you.